Hi everyone, welcome to the Bratislava International Church and to our Sunday morning recorded worship service. I'm Pastor Kyle and I'm glad that you've chosen to take the time, whenever it is, to worship with us. Although we can't be in person for worship, know full well that your sisters and brothers in Christ will huddle around their screen to watch this video and worship with you. Maybe not at the same time, but certainly in the same spirit. We pray that this time fills up your spirit and gives you hope in the midst of uncertainty. Not that this matters, since you can watch this video at any time, but don't forget that Daylight Savings begins for us here in Europe at 2 a.m. on the 29th. So reset your clocks and reset your souls and refill your cup of coffee as we spring forward together. Enjoy this worship. Stay positive. Stay connected. We are here for you. Good morning and good day. Welcome to this recording of worship for the Bratislava International Church. We are grateful to have you watching with us this morning, today, whenever you find the time to watch this worship video and to worship uh, with us here. We want to uh, tell you that uh, our prayers continue for the world as it fights this pandemic and know that you are in our prayers. If you need pastoral care of any kind, um, please contact me. My name is Pastor Kyle Svenningsen, I'm pastor of this congregation. Happy to talk to anyone who doesn't have someone to talk to. My phone number is easily found on the last page of the bulletin and on our website as well. Today, worship uh, will be spoken, so we ask you to respond with the bold print. And also, something we've been neglecting the past few weeks, we will include today a children's sermon. So we hope, kids, that we can hold your attention a little bit with our children's sermon later on in the service. And you'll get to learn a song today as well, so please join us for that. We'll take a moment to prepare our hearts and our minds for worshiping God. We begin with the confession and forgiveness. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God who is present, who gives life, who calls into existence the things that do not exist. Amen. If you were to keep watch over our sins, O Lord, who could stand? Yet with you is forgiveness, so we confess. Gracious God, have mercy on us. We confess that we have turned away from you knowingly and unknowingly. We have wandered from your resurrection life. We have strayed from your love and for all people. Turn us back to you, O oh God. Give us new hearts and right spirits that we may find what is pleasing to you and dwell in your house forever. Amen. Receive this good news. God turns to you in love. I will put my spirit in you and you shall live, says our God. All your sins are forgiven in the name of Jesus Christ, who is the free and abounding gift of God's grace for you. Amen. Dear friends, the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Let us pray. Almighty God, your Son came into the world to free us all from sin and death. Breathe upon us the power of your Spirit, that we may be raised to new life in Christ and serve you in righteousness all our days. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Today, for our children's sermon, we invite children to come close to the screen or to stop what you're doing and pay attention 
and uh, be a part of this lesson, this children's sermon with us today, where you'll learn something about this bug, this germ that's going around this virus, and how we can do our part to share in the healing and the health of all of those around us. Well, hi there, kids. Thanks for coming up for the children's sermon today. Try to get in the shot here. Um, so we've, we've been learning a lot about what we can do to stay healthy during this time and to uh, take care of each other when these germs are going around this virus. And I know it's been a very confusing thing and there's been this great way to help little ones like you understand um, how this is going to uh, pass how this pandemic, that's a really big word, but how this sickness that many people in the world are feeling um, can go away quicker and people can find healing a lot faster. You've been told by your parents, by your teachers, and so many that you need to practice a thing called social distancing, a very strange idea, but it basically it means that we need to keep our space from others so that we don't share those germs, that we don't share those viruses with each other. And you can imagine that like I have the hymnal stand up, uh, standing up right here, you can imagine that one of these is you and one of these is your friends and at school or other people in your community, right, in our community. And if we stand really close together, like the game of dominoes, if you've ever played dominoes before, I didn't have them, so I used the hymnals here. But if you imagine if one person gets sick, let's say this is you, and you have all of these other people that are really close to you, you can imagine that if you get sick and you fall over, what's going to happen? Everybody falls over, right? And so that's why it's really important that we keep our distance, that we keep space between us and other people. And we'll turn, come over here with me. I'll show you something else I have over here. If you can imagine, if we keep our distance from other people, uh, then we, if one person gets sick, you can imagine maybe this is one person gets sick, but they're far away from somebody else. They don't knock the next person over, right? And if, maybe if this person gets sick, then they don't knock over the person next to them because they have enough space between them and the other person. So this is why it's really important, friends, for us to practice this thing called social distancing, to spend a lot of time at home and uh, to keep our space from those that we really like to be around a lot, whether it be our friends at school, our teachers, or uh, other family members. We do our best um, to help keep everybody healthy, not just ourselves, but especially our neighbors. And this is a, a really important message for you to understand, and as Christians, uh, it's a really important message as well, because we are called to take care of those around us, and right now, the best way to do that is to keep our space from them. In fact, you know, this, this idea of taking care of each other comes from our God. It's something that God taught us. And it reminds me of a song that uh, I love to sing with my boys, and I had them help me to sing it, and I'm going to teach you today. I have it recorded on my phone, and so you're going to hear it, and hopefully you know it. And once we hear it uh, from Odin, we'll, we'll all join in singing it a time or two more. Okay, here we go. i got to put it up to my microphone. Sing with us. Ready? Here we go. The whole world in his hands. He's got the whole world in his hands. He's got the whole world in his hands. He's got the whole world in his hands. Thanks, everybody, and thanks, Odin, for helping us to sing that song. Will you pray with me? And just like we do in worship, you can repeat after me. Dear Jesus, thank you for loving us. Thank you for keeping the whole world in your hands. In your holy name, we pray. Amen. Thanks, kids. Have a great day. God loves you. God has you in the palm of his hands.
Our first reading today comes from the 37th chapter of Ezekiel. The hand of the Lord came upon me and brought me out by the Spirit of the Lord and set me down in the middle of a valley. It was full of bones. The Lord led me all around them, and there were many lying in the valley, and they were very dry. The Lord said to me, Mortal, can these bones live? I answered, O oh Lord God, you know. Then the Lord said to me, Prophesy to these bones and say to them, O oh, dry bones, hear the word of the Lord. Thus the Lord God said to these bones, I will cause breath to enter you, and you shall live. I will lay sinews on you, and will cause flesh to come upon you, and cover you with skin, and put breath in you, and you shall live. And you shall know that I am the Lord. So I prophesied as I had been commanded, and as I prophesied, suddenly there was a noise, a rattling, and the bones came together, bone to its bone. I looked, and there were sinews on them, and flesh had come upon them, and skin covered them, but there was no breath in them. Then the Lord said to me, Prophesy to the breath, prophesy, mortal, and say to the breath, Thus says the Lord God, Come from the four winds, O breath, and breathe upon these slain, that they may live. I prophesied as the Lord commanded me, and the breath came into them, and they lived and stood on their feet, a vast multitude. Then the Lord said to me, Mortal, these bones are the whole house of Israel. They say, Oh, our bones are dried up, and our hope is lost, and we are cut off completely. Therefore prophesy and say to them, Thus says the Lord God, I am going to open your graves and bring you up from your graves, O my people, and I will bring you back to the land of Israel, and you shall know that I am the Lord when I open your graves and bring you up, O my people. I will put my spirit within you, and you shall live, and I will place you on your own soil. Then you shall know that I, the Lord, have spoken and will act says the Lord. Word of God, word of life, thanks be to God. Our psalm today is Psalm 130, and we invite you to recite it along with me. Out of the depths I cry to you, O Lord. O Lord, hear my voice. Let your ears be attentive to the voice of my supplication. If you were to keep watch over my sins, O Lord, who could stand? Yet with you is forgiveness in order that you may be feared. I wait for you, O Lord, my soul waits. In your word is my hope. My soul waits for the Lord more than those who keep watch for the morning, more than those who keep watch for the morning. O Israel, wait for the Lord, for with the Lord there is steadfast love. With the Lord is plenteous redemption, for the Lord shall redeem Israel from all their sins. Our second reading today is from Paul's letter to the Romans, the 8th chapter. To set the mind on the flesh is death, but to set the mind on the spirit is life and peace. For this reason, the mind that is set on the flesh is hostile to God. It does not submit to God's law, indeed it cannot. And those who are in the flesh cannot please God. But you are not in the flesh, you are in the Spirit, since the Spirit of God dwells in you. Anyone who does not have the Spirit of Christ does not belong to Christ. But if Christ is in you, though the body is dead because of sin, the Spirit is life because of righteousness. If the Spirit of the one who raised Jesus from the dead dwells in you, the one who raised Christ from the dead will give life to your mortal bodies, also through this Spirit dwelling in you. Word of God, word of life. Thanks be to God.
we will speak together our gospel acclamation. Let your steadfast love come to us, O Lord. Save us as you promised. We will trust your word. Amen. The Holy Gospel according to John, the 11th chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. Now a certain man was ill, Lazarus of Bethany, the village of Mary and her sister Martha. Mary was the anointed, was who anointed the Lord with perfume and wiped his feet with her hair. Her brother Lazarus was very ill. So the sisters sent a message to Jesus, Lord, he whom you love is ill. But when Jesus heard it, he said, This illness does not lead to death, but rather it is for God's glory so that the Son of God may be glorified through it. Accordingly, though Jesus loved Martha and her sister and Lazarus, after having heard that Lazarus was ill, he stayed two days longer in the place where he was. Then after he said to the disciples, Let us go to Judea again. The disciples said to him, Rabbi, the Judeans were just now trying to stone you, and you are going there again? Jesus answered, Are there not twelve hours of daylight? Those who walk during the day do not stumble, because they see the light of this world. But those who walk at night stumble because the light is not in them. After saying this, he told them, Our friend Lazarus has fallen asleep, but I am going there to awaken him. The disciples said to him, Lord, if he has fallen asleep, he will be all right. Jesus, however, had been speaking about his death, but they thought that he was referring merely to sleep. Then Jesus told them plainly, Lazarus is dead. For your sake I am glad I was not there so that you may believe, but let us go to him. Thomas, who was called the twin, said to the other disciples, Let us also go that we may die with him. When Jesus arrived, he found that Lazarus had already been in the tomb four days. Now Bethany was near Jerusalem, some two miles away, and many of the Judeans had come to Martha and Mary to console them about their brother. When Martha heard that Jesus was coming, she went and met him while Mary stayed at home. Martha said to Jesus, Lord, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. But even now I know that, what, that whatever you ask of God, God will give you. Jesus said to her, your brother will rise again. Martha said to him, I know that he will rise again in the resurrection on the last day. Jesus said to her, I am the resurrection and the life. Those who believe in me, even though they die, will live. And everyone who lives and believes in me will never die. Do you believe this? She said to him, Yes, Lord, I believe that you are the Messiah, the Son of God, the one coming into the world. When she had said this, she went back and called her sister Mary and told her privately, The teacher is here and is calling for you. And when Mary heard it, she got up quickly and went to him. Now Jesus had not yet come to the village, but was still at the place where Martha had met him. The Judeans who were with her in the house consoling her saw Mary get up quickly and go out. They followed her because they thought that she was going to the tomb to weep there. When Mary came to where Jesus was and saw him, she knelt at his feet and said to him, Lord, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. When Jesus saw her weeping and the Judeans who came with her also weeping, he was greatly disturbed in the spirit and deeply moved. He said, Where have you laid him? They said to him, Lord, come and see. Jesus began to weep. So the Judeans said, See how he loved him. But some of them said, Could not he who opened the eyes of the blind men have kept this man from dying? 
Then Jesus, again greatly disturbed, came to the tomb. It was a cave, and the stone was lying against it. Jesus said, Take away the stone. Martha, the sister of the dead man, said, Lord, there is a stench because he has been dead four days. Jesus said to her, Did I not tell you that if you believed, you would see the glory of God? So they took away the stone, and Jesus looked upward and said, Father, I thank you for having heard me. I knew that you always hear me, and I have said this for the sake of the crowd standing here, so that they may believe that you sent me. When Jesus had said this, he cried with a loud voice, Lazarus, come out! And the dead man came out his hands and feet bound with strips of cloth and face wrapped in cloth. Jesus said to him, Unbind him and let him go. Many of the Judeans, therefore, who had come with Mary and seen what Jesus did, believed in him. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Grace to you and peace from God, our Father, and our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Another long gospel reading that we have today before us, but I want to first focus on our first reading from Ezekiel. I have a friend at seminary, you see, who somehow always managed to incorporate a Lion King reference into his sermons in our preaching class. I mean, it is a great movie with legitimate moral life lessons. But finally, after the third time using it in a sermon, our preaching professor forbade him, in a semi-serious sort of way, from using any Lion King references in subsequent sermons. And to be honest, I found it funny and clever the first time. But like our professor, I began to find them a bit far-fetched and irrelevant the second and third time around. I still like to tease him about it to this day. And yet, I have to admit that every year, every time I read this passage from Ezekiel about the Valley of Dry Bones, both in the middle of Lent and at our vigil of Easter service, all I can think about is that elephant graveyard scene from, you guessed it, The Lion King. In a tense and daunting scene where a young lion cub Simba and his friend Nala and babysitter Toucan named Zazu wander into a forbidden land of death and desolation, with danger lurking around every corner. I even watched it this past week during social distancing, social isolation with Odin, and was reminded that it is the stuff that night terrors are made of. And Lord knows that we found ourselves in our own elephant graveyards, our own valley of dry bones, a time or two, or three, or four, or even right now. Graveyards are literally being filled faster than graves can be dug as a result of this COVID-19 pandemic. And these arid and liminal places can leave us feeling overwhelmed by the reality of death, whether for us or for everyone we love so dear. It is grief made manifest in raw form. They are places of gloom and doom in which one can easily become lost in, even trapped. But fortunately for us, just like our little lion cub Simba and his friends, we have a protective parent who not only rescues us, but lifts us up out of these places of grief, of despair. And sometimes this season of Lent can feel that way a place of grief and despair because of all the self-examination and self-critical reflection that goes on during this time. Especially because we know that it was our sin that was the reason for Christ's suffering and death that comes at the end of this season. But even though it's the end of a season, it's not the end of God's story through Jesus or through us. 
And with the uncertainty of the outcome of this pandemic, it is a deep place of despair, unlike any that many have ever experienced in their lives. But there will be an end to this season of pandemic, friends, and death will come for some. But it won't be the end of the story for those who die from it. It won't, just like it won't be the end of the story for us when we die, even if it's not from this virus. Neither are the dusty, dry bones of the valley of Ezekiel's vision, nor that elephant graveyard from the Lion King the end of the story. Because out of dust and death and decay comes life restored. It's easy and understandable to look at the valley of dry bones of Ezekiel as apocalyptic in nature, a foreshadow to the end times, but rather it's the application of, in Ezekiel's context of hope amidst suffering and exile. This prophet's vision have come at a time just after Babylonian rule has taken over the Israelite kingdom and the people find themselves in exile. Ezekiel's vision is directly a metaphor for exile, the death and dry bones, and in return from exile, the Spirit's breath bringing life to those dry bones. In exile, a foreign land where you live as a slave, you feel as bad as death. But when you are able to return home, a place where you have freedom and life, then breath can enter you once again. This is the most common interpretation of Ezekiel's vision of this valley of dry bones. And self-isolation, social distancing, it may very well feel like exile right now. Even if your isolation is in your own home where you're supposed to feel the most comfortable. Those feelings are valid. But in this time, we are to lean on each other, even if only through a video call, to give you the strength and the hope to return to that place of freedom, where life and breath can enter you once again. Being transformed from death into life is a common and important characteristic of God's people throughout the Bible. This is true both in metaphor and reality. Especially as Christians, we have and hear metaphors, and we hear this calling for the transformation from death to life. For theologians like Martin Luther, this was a daily ritual. Dying to the old self of yesterday, rising anew in our waking to a life of service to others much like we are called to do, as you heard me tell the children in that sermon today. And of course, as Christians, our identity is tied to the transformative real death and resurrection of Jesus. But we don't so see much, we don't so much see the reality of that side today, at least not yet. The literal, the literal transformation from death to life changed bodies and changed realities. This is the difference between Lazarus' resurrection and Jesus' impending one. Lazarus was more about resuscitated to his mortal self, still susceptible to death. But Christ's resurrection was more than just the act of resurrection. It was about being made new for the sake of bearing God's kingdom for the world. It's something we only have faith in at this point. Faith that God will raise us up on the last day and bring us to everlasting life with Christ and all of God's beloved who have gone before us. This isn't to say that we don't hear stories of resurrection today, but their credibility is questionable most of the time. Like theologian Matthew Skinner puts it, like this with the story of Lazarus, they are probably more resuscitation stories than they are resurrection ones. The stories that do seem to be credible usually involve medical professionals who bore witness to such miracles. Because they know the signs, or the lack thereof, of death, and are able to more accurately check for them, like with a pulse. These are the stories that garner the attention of the world and are retold in the form of a novel 
or a feature film. You've likely heard of one of these stories or you've read it or watched it in full form. But then there are stories you hear about resurrection that only hurt the already hurting and don't truly celebrate the spirit of what God does through the resurrection of Jesus. One such story came from a small town in Minnesota years back when the sad news, sad news was released that a young schoolgirl had taken her own life. Suicide. The family and friends of this girl belonged to a growing Christian fellowship in the area and they began preaching that there was nothing to fear because she would be resurrected. Not in reference to the last day, to when the second coming of Jesus, but within days they said this girl would be resurrected. To tell the end of this story first, friends, they weren't able to resurrect her as they promised. And the build-up to this only complicated matters for the family and friends, especially in the depths of their grief and despair. I share this story to point out the reality that our identity as resurrected people is both powerful and yet a very delicate thing. And for both of these reasons, it is important to discuss and to understand well. When we lose the ones we love in death, we want nothing more than to have them raised again to new life in this life. Like a member of a Bible study once shared, when someone dies, we don't grieve that they've died, but that they are no longer around to be in relationship with us. And so we long for the resurrection all the more. But until that time, we call on the power of the Spirit to sustain our hope in our longing. No matter how difficult it can be, no matter how lonely it can make us feel. That's why this story of Lazarus' resurrection seems quite strange to us, and even to the closest family and friends of Jesus in our gospel. If we had heard that our dearest family member or friend was near death, we wouldn't wait a few days to go see them, knowing full well that they might die before we even got there. But Jesus waited, all for the sake of the Son of God being glorified, as he says right at the beginning of the passage. And as big picture as that reason lets on, it's still really unfortunate that all had to happen to this poor Lazarus and to those who cared about him. Perhaps Lazarus was willing to be a pawn to God's glory, to help show the power of Jesus as Messiah, the saving one. Perhaps not. We don't know because he never gets to say anything. The fact that Jesus shows emotion in this passage can also leave readers and people of faith mixed in their reactions. It leaves us with some big questions and legitimate ones at that. Is it problematic that the Son of God shows emotion? Was it justified for Christ to weep after choosing to wait two days before going to see Lazarus and his family? And why would he even weep if he knew the outcome that Lazarus would be raised from the dead? To address the first question, that question is God or Jesus showing emotion. The answer is simple. If you confess yourself to be a Christian, that means that you believe that Jesus Christ was both fully human and fully divine. It's been a part of our Orthodox teaching since the beginning of the Church, so to ask such a question as if showing emotion isn't a quality of the Divine is simply not Christian. Plus, we should feel a sense of solidarity that Jesus shows emotion because we too show emotion when someone dies. And it should make us feel closer and more connected to our Creator. And what is more, that our Creator understands the suffering that our death provides. To address the second question about Christ weeping after choosing to wait a few days, while we'd like to understand God's purpose and plan in our lives, we won't always, even if not in the moment, 
This had to be the case for Jesus and for Lazarus. And to the third question, why would Jesus weep if he knew the death of Lazarus was not the end? I'm sure that even though it was God's plan of God's glory to raise Lazarus from his illness, not that God caused the illness that would happen by the way, but that he might be raised again by Jesus, it still hurt Jesus to see Lazarus and his family suffer, to see them grieve. That's because he knew the very outcome wasn't death, and he was moved to tears, knowing that Lazarus and those left behind still had to walk, to trudge through their grief. Jesus' tears are tears of compassion for those who suffer in this story, to show that he cares about the suffering that they endure, even though that suffering won't win the day. It's the same for us, friends, in this life. That even though we believe in the outcome of the resurrection, we can still weep for the suffering and death we all must endure in the meantime. In fact, when as Christians we witness to the death and resurrection, we tend to prematurely emphasize the latter and forget to dwell and deal with the former. Death must come so that resurrection may. That is what we celebrate in the story of Jesus, the story of Lazarus, the story of all of us. Yes, it's difficult, but we are not called to do it alone, but together. With God right by our side, because Jesus suffered death as fully human and fully divine. That is why I love to choose this gospel for funerals when families ask for suggestions. Because it is a resurrection story, but more importantly, it deals with death in a genuinely human way. It shows all of the same emotions we feel when we lose the ones we love. And most of all, it shows that our God cries right alongside us in those moments. And that is okay. So as we inch closer and closer to the resurrection of Easter, may we be filled with the goodness of God that walks with us always, not around death or over it, but boldly through it to a new life in Jesus Christ. Amen. We'll now hear a special music selection from Louisa Larson, The Song of Oceans.
full Christian church, I invite us to profess our faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Let us join together in praying for all the people of the world. We pray for the church, the world, and all who are in need. God of life, bind your faithful people into one body. Enlighten the church with your spirit and bless the work of those who work for its renewal. Accomplish your work of salvation in us and through us for the sake of the world. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. God of life, you love the world you have made and you grieve when creation suffers. Restore polluted lands and waterways. Heal areas of the world ravaged by storms, floods, wildfires, droughts, and other natural disasters. Bring all things to new life. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. God of life, show redemption to all who watch and wait with eager expectation. Those longing for wars to cease, those waiting for immigration paperwork to finalize, those seeking election, those in dire need of humanitarian relief, those waiting to have permission to leave their self-quarantine. Come quickly with your hope. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. God of life, you weep with those who grieve. Unbind all who are held captive by anxiety, despair, or pain, especially those affected by COVID-19. Fill us with compassion and empathy for those who struggle, and keep us faithful in prayer. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. God of life, you are our resurrection. We remember all those who have died and trust that in you they will live again, especially the many deaths from COVID-19 and other diseases. Breathe new life into our dry bones that we too might live with you forever. Hear us, O oh God, your mercy is great. According to your steadfast love, O oh God, hear these and all our prayers as we commend them to you through Christ our Lord. Amen. Now is the time in the service when your tithes and offerings would be received. As we are not supported by the government and not meeting in person, it is really important that we uh, receive your offerings in whatever form we can. Please see instructions for e-giving contributions on the last page of the bulletin attached with this video. And even though we can't accept them in person, we rely heavily on your regular weekly giving. So please give online as you are able. We thank you for your generosity and your support of the ministry of this congregation. Let us pray. Holy and generous host, you set a table where we feast as friends. Prepare us to witness to your goodness with every gift you have given us to share that all people may know your peace through Jesus Christ, now and forever. Amen. United with the whole Christian Church throughout the world, let us pray the Lord's Prayer in the language of your preference. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil.
For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. A few announcements to share with you today. Our ministries, our in-person ministries, continue to be suspended until further notice. We are keeping you updated as much as we know. Last Sunday on the 22nd of March, our council met on Zoom, on, online, and we had a very informative conversation about how things are going for the ministry of this congregation. We also had a call from your council members to form online small groups. We hope that you've seen announcements about this online and the availability for it. I know that our women's group just met yesterday and they went very well. They met online and we also have a Bible study uh, that will be meeting on Tuesday evenings online at the normal time at 6.30. So if you have uh, interest in that, please let me know. And we also hope to have a young adult group meeting very soon. There is interest for that as well. If you have interest about any of those small groups, contact me and I will get you connected with the facilitators of those small groups. You'll continue to see a midweek video check-in from me as well, so be sure to watch our website and social media and email list for that as well. We are calling more people to participate in digital worship. Uh, we, just like Odin does by helping sing the last few weeks, and also to Louise Larson, thank you for participating in worship through your special music. If you would like to record a song to be used in worship, or to do the readings, you can record that at home, or record the prayers at home. We would love to have you do that, so you don't have to listen to me do the entire service. Please contact me if you're interested and willing to do that. And as always, if you need some moral support in this time, if you need someone to talk to, please just call. My number is on the last page of the bulletin. I am here to talk with you. will now share in the blessing. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord's face shine upon you with grace and mercy. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Amen. Go in peace, share the good news. Thanks be to God.